Hey YouTube, it's your boy Woodgy here. Come and eat with some more strategy games with AOE3DE. And today I bring you five tips for combat. So I previously did a video about a week or so ago for five tips for economy. So if you haven't seen that video, please go and check it out. It's super, super helpful for beginner players and also intermediate players alike. So I really suggest you give that a watch. But without further ado, let's get into tip number one for combat. So tip number one is basic counters. So the counters are pretty much widespread across all RTS and other strategy games alike. So essentially there's a really really nice diagram which I'll show you. Pretty much artillery can take down both either light infantry or heavy infantry. Um, hand cavalry um, is especially good at light infantry such as bowmen, um, skirmishers, stuff like that and also artillery pieces as well. Um, heavy cavalry is very good at artillery as well. Light cavalry, which is your ranged cavalry, will be good against other cavalry units and potentially artillery as well, depending on what kind of unit it is. Like writers, for example, do have a bonus against artillery. And then you've got heavy infantry, which is like your musketeers and they will be, and your Carolians from the Sweden, and they will be good at your heavy cavalry because their melee damage is um, exceptionally good as well as their range damage as well. So there you go, just a really, really rough idea. There are, so, there are some exceptions to this, but that's the general gist of it. So try and sort of get that into your head, try and memorize that as best you can, and it will really, really help you react within games. Moving on to tip number two, and it is attack move. Now, yeah, at the time that I'm making this video, there are still that. some fundamental issues yeah, with okay. the attack move yeah, yeah, function yeah. within the definitive edition. So at the moment, I sort of use it intermittently. Um, it sometimes can bug out and it can cause your units to simply walk into the enemy without attacking them. Um, but what it should simply do is it should be a command, a move command to go somewhere and if they face any sort of enemies they should immediately attack them that is essentially what an attack move is and this can be really really useful for sort of um, kiting units so especially with skirmishers which oh, are your light Jesus, infantry they have a high range so they're very very good at kiting and sort of poking um, the enemy and using attack move can be a really really good way rather than just selecting all your units and clicking on one target because if you do that you're wasting a lot of your damage all into one unit and it's just a waste and it's very very inefficient to trade that way so you kind of want to use attack moves so that you efficiently trade and your units can take shots at all different targets and you get a better spread but as i say at the moment it is very very dodgy so just be careful when using it so moving on to tip number three and it is formations so this is very very crucial and i really 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 yeah, hope that you guys try and move towards the default yeah, hotkey yeah. layout because it can be really really helpful to quickly use your hotkeys and be able to change different modes for your units depending on the situation and what's going on so let's take an example for the musketeer okay so a heavy heavy infantry that's ranged um, their standard mode their default mode will be volley mode and that will essentially automatically engage and pursue enemy units within their range. So it's the standard default mode that you have. However, you can switch to melee mode, which I just mentioned in a previous point, which is really, really good if you need to sort of um, try and surround an artillery piece if you've got nothing other than infantry. And it's also good to take the brunt of the front line from cavalry as well. And also you've got other things that cavalry have such as trample mode, as well which is like an area effect damage um, and you've also got um, which is really really good against artillery is also um, stagger mode um, so this is really really good it, it spaces your units out um, really really effective when there's you know a lot of artillery and you don't have a lot of anti-artillery or anything like that you just got full infantry selecting some of your units on stagger mode will space them out but just be careful if you do have too many units and you select a lot of them into stagger mode they'll actually become more grouped it's kind of a little weird bug um, so what you need to make sure is make sure you do it in small groups and they should spread out a lot more which will mean that you won't take as, as, as much damage from artillery pieces so moving on to tip number four, which isn't specifically for the actual unit movement and, and stuff like that. It's not really to do with the specific military units, but it is building military buildings closer to your enemy base when pressurizing. So this is something that I sort of forgot about, and it's especially crucial in the sort of mid to late game. And if you are sort of being very, very aggressive and trying to constantly put pressure on your enemy, 
The best way to do that is to try and rebuild your military buildings closer to the enemy base and also to put a forward aggressive base out as well. And this is sort of the same thing. So like a forward base is like sort of an early version of this essentially. Putting a base out, a military base, closer to the enemy so that it, it's a shorter distance for your troops to get to the enemy line. And that's just a tip that I thought I would share. It's kind of common sense, but you know, you will sort of forget about it, especially beginner players will forget about it in the mid to late game. You know, oh, they will be very, very focused on trying to keep up with their economy, trying to defend their base, you know, and they will completely forget about the fact that they could try and rebuild some of those military buildings closer to the enemy so that then you can get them to the front line a lot quicker, apply that pressure just the bows, and just, just try and overwhelm them and win the game. So moving on to tip number five, and this is an interesting one that I've seen um, a lot of pro players and experienced players do. But as I say, I think even beginner players can, can start to do this when they start to build up their, their micro skill. And that is essentially sacrificing units when retreating. And this is completely to do with snaring. So the way that the game works is, is that all units will move at the speed of the slowest units if you have them grouped. So for example, if you have an artillery piece, which are generally really, really slow moving, and you have a bunch of cavalry, if you select the cavalry and the artillery piece together, the cavalry units will run at the same speed as that artillery piece. Now this is very, very different to a game like StarCraft, for example, where all units will just move at their speed. So you've got to bear this in mind. So the best thing to do, for example, if you've got some musks, some musketeers, some heavy infantry, and cavalry are attacking the units, the best thing to do if you know you're not going to win is just select a few of the units at the back line and just essentially just sacrifice them. So just get them to go into melee mode and start attacking the cavalry and that will free up your other large amount of units in front to be able to get away from the snare and be able to move at their normal speed. So snaring is a really, really big thing that I didn't really know about when I started playing the game. And essentially there are a few exceptions, but pretty much across the board any sort of melee based infantry or cavalry um, when they attack a unit it will snare the unit and it will reduce their speed and this essentially gives um, the melee troops um, an advantage essentially within the game it's like a handicap for them so that's something that I th thought I'd mention it's, it's something that can be really really useful because especially if you get caught out with longbowmen or archers and cavalry units come in you've got nothing to deal with those cavalry units the best thing is just slip a few of those longbowmen away get the enemy focusing on 20 percent of those longbowmen get the other 80 percent out of there and hopefully the snare will wear off and they'll be able to move a lot faster and hopefully retreat back to your base and then you won't lose all of them so kind of a interesting tip there and i hope you guys sort of understand what i mean and as i say let me know down in the comments below if i've sort of explained that well if you've got any more queries around it please let me know. And of course, we've got to have a cheeky extra tip, and that is keep your artillery focusing on units. Now, of course, I'm only speaking about artillery pieces that are good against infantry, like the Falconets, horse artillery. I mean, horse artillery are okay against buildings, but you know what I mean. Um, especially, there's, there's a real big one here, which is culverins. So culverins are the anti-artillery piece. Um, and they're really, really crucial to make sure that you are microing them well, make sure they're focusing on the enemy artillery or ships, which they're good at as well. But the way that it works is that artillery will always default to a building. It will default to the closest building. So if it kills a bunch of troops, it will just then automatically move to a building. And you won't even know because you'll, you'll be doing stuff with your, other, with your other troops, your infantry and your cavalry in a fight. You'll be microing them and you'll forget about your artillery that could really, really help in the battle. They'll just be stuck shooting a building when they should be shooting units. So just make sure at the back of your head when you're in a fight and you've got artillery that are good against infantry, just make sure that they're constantly firing at units. And I don't think there's any way that you can stop this. I think it's just something within the game that they will just automatically move back to buildings and start shooting them if they're in range. So just make sure you keep on top of it and you keep them busy killing the enemy. And that's pretty much it guys, in a nutshell. Five tips and an extra one for you for combat and military sort of management. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please let me know if there's anything that I've missed out, anything crucial that you think I should have included. Please drop it down in the comments below. You guys know what to do to support the channel. You guys have been absolutely amazing in the other video that I did for the economy. 
five tips for basic economy so if you guys want to check that video out please go ahead and do so i've got other things on my channel such as the learning series which is me learning new sieves um and also i've got replay analysis of of things as well and i've also got other things you know other than age of empires 3 you know such as total war i've got card games and stuff on there when i first started the channel so if you're interested in anything like that please go ahead and check it out Nah, nah, Thank nah, you very nah, much, nah. guys. Have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and I'll catch you in the next video.